Enabling uh, six degrees of freedom in Unity is as simple as getting Unity 2017.3 or newer. It's enabled by default in these newer versions of Unity. Uh, should you want to specify that your app is not ready for 6DOF or that your app doesn't support 3DOF anymore, uh, this can be specified pretty straightforwardly in the player settings, XR settings. Under the covers, Unity is adding a uh, head tracking feature tag to the Android manifest of your app. Um, and you can see the required flag is set as appropriate as you set up in the UI. This feature tag is also used by the VR Play Store to filter out um, the availability of your app should the device that uh, the player is on not support 3DOF or 6DOF. Um, the coordinate space that uh, the Lenovo um, Mirage Solo uses is the same as the Daydream 3DOF devices, where the origin is the head position and orientation at the start of the VR session. The Daydream recentering gesture will move this origin to the current position and orientation. And the safety region and the floor height also realign when the safety region, uh, I'm sorry, when the re recentering operation is complete. <coughs> uh, the GVR Unity, the SDK for Unity has the added GVR headset component as the main API surface for all of your 6DOF methods. Add this component to a game object in your scene to enable these new features. For apps that support both 3DOF and 6DOF, their GVR headset API provides a simple property to get up for determining if the current device supports positional tracking should your game need to adjust its interaction logic. WorldSense helps keep users safe in the expanded Dex 6 dos space by constraining users to a safety region of about a 60 centimeter radius cylinder centered about the origin. <coughs> As the user approaches the threshold, the system will fade the display out to gray and provide a user with directional feedback in the form of an arrow, guiding the user back inside of the safety region. Uh, a user can reset the center of the safety region, as I said, with using the recentering gesture on the Daydream controller. Uh, we do recommend avoid pushing the safety region limits as it is not particularly good uh, user experience. If your game has any sort of critical action, uh, it is, you should pause whenever the user leaves the safety region. Um, the GVR headset API provides an event you can register for to be notified when the user exits or enters, enters the safety regions, allowing you to pause critical game action as needed. You can also query uh, the GVR headset API for properties about the safety region, like the inner and outer radius. The inner radius is where the fade out operation starts, uh, and the outer radius is, of course, where it, it ends and the event gets fired. Um, these property uh, getters are all of the try get uh, form because these will not work on 3DOF headsets, and so they will return false. WorldSense can also detect the floor and report a vertical distance from origin. At startup, it defaults to minus 1.6 meters. It takes about five seconds from the floor being visible to get a real value, accuracies, you know, plus or minus a few, per, few centimeters. Uh, we do attempt to constrain the floor height to a reasonable level, so if it seems like it's detecting uh, the top of a desk, we won't report that as the actual floor height. Or if for some reason you're looking over a ledge and it's really far away, it will also ex exclude that. The floor height estimation does get more accurate over time as it's able to uh, see it and collect more data about the environment that it's in. Uh, if your game does use floor height, um, it's recommended that you uh, guide the user through a brief calibration exercise, first informing the user about the need to know what the floor height is, and then guiding the user to stand and perhaps look around their environment to, get, uh, to have the device get to know your environment. Uh, we also recommend to apply the floor height at known points when the user might expect the floor to change so the floor is not wiggling around on any sort of regular basis. Grab it and cache it and don't change it. Um, uh, and times that you might do this is like at the end of an exercise or when they do the recentering operation or maybe between scenes. Also be sure to take in a range of player heights to consider you know, people that aren't so tall to people that are supremely tall should you need to reach up and grab things. The GVR head site provides a simple property getter for getting the floating point value of the floor height. 
you can get this at any time, and it will change in real time as the headset's able to uh, uh, understand the environment more. But as I said, don't, use, don't set it all the time. Uh, the GVR also provides um, a new event for getting notified when the recentering gesture uh, completes. And it will tell you about the uh, difference from the old position uh, and orientation to the new uh, position and orientation. Uh, this could be useful to use this information if you want um, a recentering operation to not change where the user is looking. So you may be looking off to the left, and if they do the recenter by default, it will have them pushed off to the front. But with this information, you can counter rotate and maintain the orientation whilst moving the safety cylinder and realigning the controller all at once. Um, and now that you've got a greater uh, environment to work around, work with, um, you have a greater opportunity to build more immersive uh, environments. Um, <clears throat> now it's, it's more important to have, if you have any non-player characters, to have them, say, maintain eye contact. Or maybe you can have um, you know, projectiles be aimed straight at their heads so that they have to you know, dodge and duck to get away from them. Uh, with six off head tracking, spatialized audio becomes even more important for immersion, even for static objects, because you move as you move, uh, because be, their sound source moves around as as you do. Um, Google provides the resonance audio SDK for Unity to make it easy to add depth and space to your soundscapes, and it's now uh, integrated by default in 2018.1, I believe. Um, Environment maps let you bake complex scenes down to something much easier for mobile devices to render. Uh, existing technologies like omnidirectional stereo or stereo cube maps work really well with 3 off head tracking as head position is locked to the single position wh for which those environments were rendered. But they remain locked to your head in 6 off environments and so are not nearly as effective. Google provides a new technology called Surat that uh, is able to take very complicated scenes from uh, Unity or Maya and uh, bake them down into a much simpler uh, form of geometry and textures that is um, easy for mobile devices to render with and is, uh, works very well with six off head tracking as you can maintain parallax as you move around um, with the environment you've baked down. Resonance Audio um, is a multi-platform spatial audio SDK optimized for mobile devices, delivering uh, high fidelity at scale. This, um, this <laughs> powerful spatial audio technology is critical to realistic AR, VR, gaming, and video. It simulates how waves interact with the human ears and with the environment. It is able to model not only the, the, your relationship to the sound, but the, how the sound interacts with the room that you've uh, created in a virtual environment. Uh, with these powerful tools built for Unity, it's easy to configure the acoustics of spaces, and it works with popular audio engines like FMOD and WISE. Surat, as I said, is a scene simplification technology designed to process very complex 3D scenes into a representation that renders officially on mobile 6 VR systems. This allows you to create rich, complex scenes in Unity that would be slow to render on mobile devices, or maybe even slow to render on desktop hardware, depending on how complex you make your scene. And then let Surat bake it down to something that Unity can render at 75 frames a second on mobile hardware. Because the results are geometry in Texas, parallax is maintained, head position moves about, and the resultant data is um, reasonably compact for loading on to mobile devices. What's unique to Google's light field approach is that it's able to maintain not only rendering quality, but also much smaller file sizes. I'm going to show you a clip from the first game made with Surat. And remember, as you're watching this, it's all rendered on real time on a Mirage Solo stand standalone headset. Now live on the Daydream Store, developed by Seismic Games, is Blade Runner Revelations. It's already on. The other great thing about Mirage Solo and Daydream is you only need to make one single app. 
Note that the controller and therefore all your interface and gameplay interactions are unchanged. With one app, you get access to Daydream users on both VR and Mirage, uh, Daydream, smartphone VR and Mirage Solo. Um, and with that, here are where you may get the SDKs for all these delightful technologies. And um, I'm now available to take any questions if you have any. Um, I know that uh, the two cameras on the front are a uh, grayscale, but uh, does us as developer, can we get the feed from the cameras on the front? Uh, not today, no. Um, the controller currently just supports the three degrees of freedom, right? Yes, the um, controller for the Mirage Solo is the same as the Daydream, and it's just a three DOF directional controller. Is there something planned like for a six degrees of freedom controller for like the standalone assets? Um, we are working on a developer kit with um, six degrees of freedom controllers. Really? I believe we have a blog post posted on our website about um, these developer kits that will be available later this year. Thank you. Well, thank you all very much for coming today, and hope you have a good uh, Unite. <laughs>